I'm Ryan. My wife and I spent four months converting this van into a little tiny house on wheels. And today, I'm gonna take you on a little tour. So let's do it. Our van is a 2017 Dodge Ram Promaster high roof with a 159 inch wheelbase. We wanted this specific van because well, I know nothing about diesel mechanics, but a little about regular mechanics, so I can actually do a lot of work on this van myself. Plus, it's one of the wider vans around, meaning we can actually sleep horizontally, which gives us a little extra room for other stuff. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about on this van is the screens. There are two things here I did not do myself. These two front screens are one of them. I did do the rear screen. It's no moving parts, it's completely stationary, but this, we needed something safe and secure because we are traveling with two cats and a dog. So I had to hire someone to do this. Plus, I'm no seamstress. I have no idea what I'm doing. These screens are awesome. They uh, zip and unzip, obviously, and they're attached to the bottoms here with high strength marine grade Velcro. Everything on this is marine grade. Like I said, we needed something very strong and secure. But one thing we can still do is reach the door so we don't have to unzip this whole entire door to be able to close the van door itself. That way we're not risking letting any cats out. So these screens are mostly meant for the safety of our animals, but when we're not using them for the animals and we're not using them for bugs, we can actually tuck them up out of the way like this and then they're not bothersome at all. And I think it looks pretty cool, man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so probably my favorite part of the van, the captain's seat, the swivel chair. This thing's awesome. I think it's crucial for any van build, some bus builds, especially if you're going with the short bus, it's necessary too. It just really opens up the space. And uh, I don't know, man, you can have more people sitting here. You can hang out with, with more people when you know, you're not dealing with uh, the, the world ending, but yeah. We are thinking about getting one for the driver's seat at some point, but it does raise the seat up by like an inch to an inch and a half. So I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna do that because I'm not a tall guy, I'm only 5'9", and I don't know if that will really hinder me with like hitting the pedals or anything. But either way, the extra room, the extra workspace, it's pretty awesome. So onto the couch. Uh, two of the things that people notice about our couch are the height and the width. I'm gonna start with the width first. One of the things I notice about a lot of other van builds is if you wanna have somebody else sleeping with you or camping out with you, there's a lot of intricate moving parts that needs to take place to be able to have an extra bed. And if we learned anything from being on the road for two months in an RV, the less amount of work you do, the better. So we built the sleeping area of the couch exactly two feet. So you can sleep on it very comfortably and we have a few extra inches in the back for the slant just to be a little bit more comfortable. The cushions are made of four inch memory foam and all we did was uh, used a quarter inch Luan as a backer, wrap this uh, kind of orange rust looking pleather like a present and stapled it. And so far it's holding up pretty well. So the next thing is the height. Uh, I needed to build it extra high because it houses our Dometic CFX 35 quart fridge. It's powered off of 12 volt and 110, which are both wired up underneath the couch back there, safe and sound. We also have plenty of storage beneath the couch along with this pretty nifty little kitty cubby. If you can't tell, our pets are pretty important to us. So our kitchen's pretty straightforward. We're just using two six gallon water tanks, one for fresh water, one for gray water. We have no actual electric water pump in this van. Everything's run off this marine water pump right here, just a little foot pump. And the water pressure is good enough for washing dishes and hands and stuff like that. So that's all we need. Maybe in the future we might get an actual electric pump, but for now, it's not necessary. We got three drawers, two small ones and one big one. A fun story about these drawers is when we went on our very first trip, I didn't have these little things in the way to stop the drawers from coming out. And I didn't have anything in the way to stop the refrigerator drawer from coming out either. So literally our very first turn out of our neighborhood, all these drawers and the refrigerator came screaming out and uh, Misty had to sit in this very terribly awkward position like this for like an hour and 15 minutes till we got to our campsite to make sure that everything uh, stayed put, nothing broke loose. So that was pretty fun. 
But where's the stove? What are we cooking on? You pull this out, you throw that over, and boom, baby, we got cooktop and we got extra countertop. This is actually in Origo 3000. It came out of a sailboat in California. It's an alcohol stove. It uses denatured alcohol. We did not want to mess with propane. One, because I didn't want to have to cut a hole in my van. And two, if we want to leave the animals here alone while we go on a hike, I didn't want the risk of something with propane because it's combustible possibly exploding and harming our animals. And denatured alcohol, when you're not cooking, I don't believe it produces carbon monoxide, but when you are cooking, it does put off carbon monoxide. So when you are cooking, you have to vent, hence why we put it right here in front of the window screen. What do you think, cameraman? Wow. <laughs> Shitting all over my ego. Back to why we bought this specific van. The walls on the Dodge Ram Promaster here are wider than most of the vans on the market, if not all of them, I think. Meaning we can actually fit a queen size bed horizontally in here. This cutout was desperately crucial because it's actually a short queen mattress that we have in here. I would have done the cutout on this side, but all of our electric wiring runs somewhere behind this wall and I didn't want to take a risk. so. Unfortunately, it's there forever. Again, I'm only 5'9", so I can actually fit laying down in this thing pretty comfortably. My uh, my toes may touch a little bit while I'm rolling around in the middle of the night, but overall, it's pretty nice. And uh, we have more than enough room in this bed to fit me, Misty, Suki, Smalls, and probably sometimes Sammy, but Sammy never really lays with us. But what is the big open space down below? So one of the big questions that I've had throughout this build was, where are you gonna poop? Where are the cats gonna poop? And ladies and gents, I introduce you to the Lugaloo. Luckily for me, in a non-emergency situation, I have myself a nifty little pee jug. But Misty, unfortunately, can't exactly pee into a jug. And for emergency situations only, we can use this for number twos. Emergency situations only. And when it's not an emergency and we're actually at camp somewhere, you know, dispersed, we can have this outside and our plan is to have a standalone, taller, kind of narrow tent that we can have this in and it'll be our own little private bathroom away from camp. That way, we're not smelling the goods, so to speak. And as for the cats, well, on this side is gonna be a litter box and a litter genie. That way, they can go and do their business and get back to sleeping, eating, and then again, litter boxing. So there's the big open space. Moving away from the poo zone, uh, our cabinets. It's a pretty straightforward construction. I stole the idea from Eamon and Beck, to be honest with you, so kind of go check out their video. What am I talking about? I've made a video on it. Just I'll link it above, click up here, wherever it is, and you can see how I built it. But uh, yeah, my buddy made these cool little leather handles that snap together so when uh, you're driving down the road, they're not opening and things aren't coming and flying at you. It's the same leather handles as down here, but you know, a little bit different. We got food storage, another kitchen storage here, and then we'll have my storage and my clothes, and then Misty's down there. Everything's on these pretty nifty little soft close hinges, but in the future, I will have to add some hinges that actually keep it open because that's not cool, man. At least they close really soft, just not on your head. One thing I didn't mention in the bed build is a little cubby hole for Misty on that side of the bed. It spans the whole width of the van, and it's just a little area for her to keep, you know, some extra clothes or a book or a beer or a drink or a spot to charge her phone. Just an extra bit of storage for her. And then moving over here, this may look like a shelf to you, and you'd be absolutely right, it is a shelf, but mostly it's a kitty walk. It's an area for the animals to get from the bed up here on, the, on this kitty walk over to our overhead storage over there. If you have cats, you know cats like being up high and they like being in kind of little cubby holes. So 
we wanted them to have a little bit of an area to walk over there without having to try to manage to jump from down here on the couch all the way up here while banging their head up on this like a freaking pong ball or something like that. So yeah, we built a little kitty walk, little catwalk. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I started this video by saying there were two things that I didn't do myself on this van build. One were the front two screens, and the other one is the most important one, electric and power. And all that is stored in our garage. All of our wiring, our lights, our outlets, everything, our max air vent fan, our Dometic Brisk 2 air conditioning unit that's at 13,500 BTU, everything is run back through here. This is our little fuse box. We've got uh, breakers, we've got fuses, we've got more than enough room for more breakers and fuses. And we have these wiring here that run up through the roof, ready and prepared for solar. But what I'm about to tell you next, I had to bust out the notes. We are running a 100 amp hour Renogy lithium battery through a Xantrax XC 2000 watt inverter. No idea what any of that shit means, but I do know that if I tried doing any of this myself, there was a very good possibility that I would have gotten hurt or would have gotten killed. So that's why I hired somebody else to do all of this crap. We also have everything ready for shore power if we decide to stay somewhere with a 30 amp hookup, as well as an alternator charger to help us charge our batteries while cruising down the road. But I know what you may be thinking, isn't this a small space for two adults, a dog, and two cats? And I'd say, yeah, you're absolutely right. But as far as us and Sookie go, we'll be getting plenty of space to move and exercise. And as the cats go, they're mostly lazy, but love their porch. So the screens offer them a constant screen and porch vibe. But we're also going to be working on leash training them to make sure they have enough room to stretch their legs on the road. Their safety and comfort is at the top of the list of importance for us. We're also open to other ideas on how to make all of our kids even happier and more comfortable. So make sure to comment below any ideas you might have to help out with that. And that's our van. It's not perfect and we still have some work to do in the future. Things like more storage ideas will come, more batteries and awning, we're not quite sure. And I think it would be a lie for me to say it's ever truly done. If you like our van in this video, make sure to hit the like button. Tell me what you like about it in the comments down below. Hell, tell me what you don't like about it. Either way, thanks for watching and subscribe if you want to see more. This isn't just a van life channel though, so click here to see us living on the road a bit and click here to see the van build from start to finish. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.